I crave being taken care of, but I also take care of everyone else and make it impossible to take care of me. That's so fun. like, I, th- I think that's a fun challenge for a boyfriend. Impossible it's super fun for him. I He's dare you. a great time. So <laughs> He's having the time of his life trying to navigate this fucking maze. Hey, welcome back. We're not for everyone. We're a podcast hosted by a hater and a lover. I'm Jess. I'm the lover. I'm Caroline. I'm the hater. She said it in such a like angelic tone. What the hell? What the hell? Full of surprises. Yeah. I'm feeling angelic. Yeah, I'm feeling angelic. I would say you're looking angelic. You have such a glow about you at the <sighs> beach this week. Thank you for everyone who can't see me. I'm extraordinarily tan right now. And I feel so much hotter. I feel so much hotter than I do for the other like nine months of the year. It's really hard. It's really hard because I think I get used to this level of hotness and I'm like, oh, this is the real me. And then, and then September comes around and then it's just like nine months of being depressed over losing my hot identity. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, couldn't relate more. Like that is... That is exactly how I feel. And I feel like this summer I haven't been getting as tan as I usually do because I know I made fun of somebody in my solo episode for like complaining about how bad the summer weather has been. But shortly thereafter, I realized that I am quite affected by the fact that it's hot. It's like there's like wildfire smoke everywhere. Like you just can't be outside very easily because I look down at my legs and I'm like, what is this? This isn't the real me. This it's not the real me. Midwestern Chicago girl. That's not me. The way that I look, seventy five percent of the year is not the real me. Yeah, I I tend I'm inclined to identify with just my hot phase. It's I identify tough. with self tanned me more than I identify with natural. If natural isn't tan, then self tan is more me. If that makes sense. Do you self tan? Do you self tan like a like an at home tanner? I'll do an at home tanner. Sometimes like I'll a do spray. Is it a mist? It's a body mist. mist. It's a it's mousse. A mousse? And I have a Fuck. I have a mitt, and I rub it all over. Sometimes I do a lazy one, and I just do my like shoulders and legs, like just yeah. the parts of my body that would be showing in clothing and Not stuff. Not the face. Not the face. I don't usually do my face because I'm such oh a God. fan of bronzer. That like the bronzer oh. helmet that I apply to myself every single day, it makes my face look <gasps> tanner than my body most of the time. Is a bronzer so when helmet, I'm self-tanned, oh, it fix it fixes okay. it blends the whole thing. Is yeah. a bronzer helmet like a is that a product or are you making a joke? <laughs> no, there's this um YouTuber named Desi Perkins who is like a huge makeup YouTuber and influencer. And I used to watch her videos religiously. And she used to call it a bronzer helmet because she would apply like because one of the areas that you apply bronzer is like around your temples and the top of your forehead if you want to oh, reduce yeah. the size of your forehead at all. And just because that's where like the sun would naturally hit and she would be so heavy handed with it. And she called it a bronzer helmet. And I have adopted that. I think that's That's cute. It's a technique. Yeah. So usually my face is really tan from that. And then I just need my body to match. And okay, that's what I'll do. I mean, ideally, I would love a natural tan because then I don't have to rub this shit on my legs every week. But once a week, I'm not going to get it. It'll really fade in like, yeah, yeah. seven to that's 10 what, days. That's, that's what I'm disinclined. Like I would be hotter. I'm, I'm, I'm collecting data about self tanner. I've been talking to my little sister about it too, but um, I'm really disinclined to do beauty, to take on beauty habits that are like a weekly or even a bi-weekly thing. Cause it's just another one. We talked about this before. Like I have to do this forever until I die. It's yeah. like, I, I just want to wake up hot obviously that's what everybody wants but even like bronzer it's why I don't like the waxing it's it's part of why I don't like the waxing and the shaving and um I don't get my nails done like I can't keep it I think the feeling that you have to keep it up and it's like getting your eyebrows done getting your eyelashes done I've experimented with all of them but then you get used to that standard or at least for myself then you get used to that standard if I only feel hot when I have like eyelashes done or nails done then when it then there's like this constant, I have this constant sense of anxiety of like, okay, well, I have to get the eyelashes done next week. I have to get the tanner done in two weeks and I have to get this done in three weeks. And then it's like, they almost rarely coincide 
Mm-hmm. Except for some like rare magical like like unicorn moment where you've got your eyelashes, you got the nails, you got the hair, you got the whatever else people do. So I'm just not doing any of it. And even with the bronzer, I have this like pathological desire. Like I just want to be beautiful. I just want to be beautiful with no effort. I don't mm. if I Asian I even gracefully. Used to, yeah. But but it takes so much effort, but I'm, I don't know. Like I even used to, I feel like a liar. I used to even feel like a liar if I wore clothes that complimented my body, AKA like hyped up the good parts and minimized the mm. quote bad parts. Like, you know, whatever you've complex about. Um, I didn't like my thighs when I was younger. So, I would, but I would never wear like a dress or skirt to cover my thighs because then I felt like a liar. I felt like I had to like lead with the mm. worst parts of me. Like I just, I don't know. There's like this weird pathology about, um, I just want to, I don't know if I have to like dress up to look that way, then I, then I feel like a, I'm secretly ugly and I'm a liar. Yeah. No, I understand what you're saying. Which it's is stupid. Like, which is stupid. To be well, clear. because most people will do the things, the beautifying things, and play it off like it's natural. You're like, I'm not going to do the beautifying things because if it's not natural, then like it's a lie. And then I feel bad about myself because I have to lie. I shouldn't have to lie about how I look because then it confirms that I don't look naturally totally. beautiful is that what you're yeah, getting at yeah I think so I think so yeah I feel like I've put I don't know also this is like such maybe unhealthy thoughts to put into people's head I'm not saying that this is correct I'm just right saying, I'm just saying. I don't think it's incorrect I don't know if there's a correct <laughs> I, way to be about yeah this what's stuff, the correct you know? what's the correct way to covet hotness it's all I want I don't really care about anything else like I don't right I don't think anyone does. I don't think anyone does. I think everything is oh, rooted. Oh, 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 I just hit my head so hard oh, against oh, no. the bed. Oh my God. I just threw my head back and left in my head so hard against the bed. You are going to need to maybe not sit there because we do a lot of throwing our heads back in laughter. Oh, okay. Carry on about being hot. That was okay, the Lord. You're so that was hot the Lord. Right now. That was the Lord Jesus Christ being you, like you vapid, superficial bitch. <laughs> Don't say all you care about is hotness. I think, I think, I think an angel just slapped me across the face. Okay, go on. I do think that, like, whether people admit it or not is one thing, but hotness and like sex and attraction and like attracting partners and whatever is at the root of everything that people do, including totally. like everything, not just how you look. But it's basically everything I'll, i just want to be hot I'm, and i'm like, tired of pre- i'm pre- tired of pretending like i i care about other stuff i don't sure but you want to <laughs> i'm still stuck on this like you want to be naturally hot because i want to be hot but i have no yeah. problem with paying to be hot i mean i'm generally a natural person i don't get i'm not natural or- i'm not natural i've gotten botox and i work so hard at you know, finding workouts the, like, and stuff. yeah, working out and thinking about like the low effort. It's more like the, the long-term maintainable, like sustainable ways yeah. that I, my hair can be pretty without me having to do much. I think I'm really just lying to myself about the amount of effort I put in. Does it, does it make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I see what you're saying. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, for me, I'm more like if I can pay for someone else to do this, such as my nails, like I always have my nails done because it, ma- yeah. it makes me feel hot to have like, and they look long, so good, fun nails. And it makes it's me feel like I'm thing. expressing myself. And yeah. yeah. But if I can like pay and go put my hand somewhere and have someone else do that, then I'm psyched about it as opposed to putting in the effort at home. Some people would like spend hours doing their own nails. You'll never catch me doing that. It's worth it for me to make the appointment every three weeks and pay the $90, which is too much money every three weeks. Like I, I get that it's an outlandish thing. And also it's I'm what you so like happy. Yeah. It's what I want to spend my money on. It's like, I'm so happy to do it. And then there's other things that I haven't done may never do. I don't know. I think it's just different for everyone. Yeah. Um, self tan. I, I don't do yeah. it regularly. I don't do it regularly, but in the summer when I catch my pasty legs when I look down at them and I'm like I that's like a moment of terror that prompts action immediately and I go 
and like shave and exfoliate and do the whole thing and self tan. But I don't yeah. go. That's one that I don't pay for because I'm not doing it all the time. It's just like a reactionary occasional thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, if I know I'm going to be wearing a swimsuit or like a short outfit or something, that's when I'm yeah. going to do that. I don't know. There's there's logic to it, but I have no problem. Yeah. I have no problem with it being quote unquote fake. Cause I don't think it's fake. I think it's like enhancing <sighs> my natural. I know self. it's not, it's not fake. It's not any less fake or real than the actual actions I'm doing. It's just like, it's funny. I think people's, I think it's fun to talk about, get this fucking bug out of here. First of all, it's, it, I think it's fun to talk about people's beauty systems uh, yeah. because they're like, they're kind of private. They're extremely dedicated often. Um, and we all have like our own different workflow for the beauty process, the system, the philosophy. And I actually watched a really interesting video on YouTube. It was called like something about like why I quit beauty work or something Mm. and it was just this girl talking about she'd been some kind of like GQ hottie of the week or something like that or something I don't know whatever never heard of it but sounds legit (laughs) yeah sounds like legit credentialed hot girl right that's why I've um, never heard of it (laughs) and she then you know and she talked about upkeeping whatever she was doing you know dropping a bunch of weight and dyeing her hair and getting the lashes and doing the tan. And I I don't even know all everything she was doing, but eventually just dropping it and like referring to beauty work as all this un it's, it's unpaid labor. Like actually mm. the, so many guys are going to roll their eyes at this, but women know it's true. All of the hours that go into, and really are expected to go into getting your hair done, all the hours and all of the money getting your hair done, um, maintaining the diet, doing the workout, um, doing the nails, doing the waxes, doing the lashes, whatever it all is. Um, unless you're just naturally gorgeous, then fine. Like, okay. Yeah. No, you don't need to do the stuff, but you do need to be gorgeous. And, um, and it's like, it's like a part-time job, the amount of time that most of us put into it. And it is just expected baseline. And I do it too. And I don't think I could give it up but um it was it was interesting and you know didn't really at all convince me to drop any of my (laughs) habits yeah like what did she feel when she dropped it because to me and I think it's an interesting conversation like we were kind of talking about it last week with the waxing and lasering conversation where you were like don't pretend that it's self-care because you're right like to an extent we we internalize ourselves that it's self-care because at this point it's internalized the expectation that we need to like upkeep these certain parts of our selves and our beauty regimens to the point where it's like, okay, we're going to be doing this no matter what, because like, it's an accepted thing in society. So if we're going to be doing it, then let's frame it as taking care of our ourselves. Let's make it more luxurious. Let's make it like there's cute packaging and cute shops you can go to and cute, um, spa treatments that you can do and like let's make it seem like it's taking care of yourself because either way it's gonna have to happen um and I feel like there's something interesting there you know it's It's, like we're fooling ourselves because we have to do it anyway of course it's the exact way that the washing machine the KitchenAid mixer and the vacuum were pitched to housewives Mm. in like a really cute it makes your day better you're gonna feel great you're gonna feel powerful it's gonna like make everything so breezy what a gift and it was I think there's some saying that like the washing machine did more for women's liberation than any legislation ever did Um, which probably did like you know uh, freeing up hours in the day but it is still it's not a perfect analogy and and I, I don't say it with like gendered anger or anything. It's just, it is interesting to me. Um, I fully participate in it. And I mean, I don't even know if there's really a way out of it. Like I, I enjoy talking about it. I'm not rioting because at the end of the day, I'm like, it does feel like, unfortunately, to some degree, women's main currency the way the main way you can have clout as a woman 
is what it's your it's beauty like that's what we basically I'm not saying it's right but that yeah. is on some level what we all agree to that's basically what we all agree to and um and for men it's not that exactly like for the average man we basically all agree oh this is also wrong this is not a personal value of mine but like men feel much more evaluated based on their wallet mm-hmm. um and women women don't have to carry that burden in the same way um I feel like I hope everyone understands I'm not saying this like this is the way it should be and this yeah. is right but clear. I I you know even um even the most liberated progressive girl powery women I I hear how they talk they can't help but worship and ogle the most beautiful celebrities or like she's a powerful woman but she's also beautiful like that Mm -hmm. makes it better um like we just we're addicted to it and I I don't know if any amount of education or like there's just something obviously evolutionary there that sometimes feels like you can't get out of it right yeah yeah, whatever. I still, it's still fun to be hot. Still fun to be hot. Yeah, I think that's the moral of the story. We're still all pursuing hotness, and yeah, Caroline's I'm not succeeding really, today. I'm not really asking for a change. As long as I feel like I'm keeping up, I'm like, the system's good. Right. Works for me. I'll be yeah. a slave because I'm one of the more successful ones. <laughs> I think I rank medium. I think I rank as a medium slave. Mid. I definitely grew up like, um, especially as kids, my older sister was like, we just, everyone was like, she's the beautiful one. Um, especially when we were younger and my mom tells stories about like, it was like strangers would come up and be like, Oh, your toddler is so beautiful. And then I'd be like in the stroller with my forehead. And my mom would be like, we are <laughs> proud of, both of them and I was like that's really heroic of you mom thank you but like from so brave <laughs> from, from so brave of you <laughs> but like from a very young age and it didn't really bother me or I don't know maybe I haven't dug deep enough into this complex but like as a kid I was very aware that like she was beautiful and that wasn't my thing and uh, I don't really remember it remembering it consciously bothering me um but I definitely was aware that like my personality was my thing. Mm. Um, so that was probably a reaction, but um, yeah, it's something that I keep in mind. I think it's actually more of a burden probably to the beautiful kid to tell them all the time that they're beautiful and praise them for being beautiful because then you learn that's your value or right. it seems it seems that that's your value. I don't know. It's just something I think a lot. We, we, we drag kids into it pretty quickly. Yeah, that's actually such a good segue <laughs> into oh. one of the things that I had written down for today. And I'm sorry, they're like fucking mowing the lawn outside and I'm just going to keep talking. Um, but I was listening to my favorite podcast other than ours, which is the Nikki Glazer podcast. And they were talking about those identities that you cling to, especially when you're younger and like the the moment that you decide that somebody decides like, oh, I'm going to be the funny one or I'm going to be the smart one or like whatever fill in the blank, I'm going to be that kid, whether it's in your family or in your school. And then like taking that a step further, whether or not you stuck with the thing that you said you were going to do, you know, like we've, I think a lot of people can relate to having that moment of clarity or maybe like period of time when you were younger where you were like, okay, it seems like I'm getting rewarded for being funny or being smart or being beautiful or whatever. And then maybe you latch on to that for a really long time. And then maybe it informs your whole fucking life. Like I do think that Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's an element of like me performing and wanting to make people laugh and all of that that's rooted in like being rewarded for that and seeing that that was the thing that like could make my parents happy or could make my teachers and my people in my school happy or whatever and just now it's like what I try to do for a living and it's kind of like was I I don't know I don't know I don't know what to make of it it's not necessarily Mm -hmm. a bad thing but it is kind of interesting that that's where like so much of my personhood is rooted so I was wondering 
if you relate, if there's any like moments that stand out and like what, what blank, the, the blank one did you most align with growing up? Is it still true? Mm. Yeah, it is so interesting. I think I definitely, as a kid knew that my role was to be like a monkey, to be, Hmm. yeah, like, goofy and silly and 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 make everyone laugh that was like what it was it was to a degree like the glue in my family um being able to like make everyone laugh meant that things could be okay for Mm. a little bit and but I actually didn't it was definitely my identity but for some reason I didn't translate that to professional ambitions until college like I knew I liked performing but my intention was to be a serious actor from the time I was like 11 and I kind of overlooked the whole comedy thing I didn't really think of it as a professional skill even through college I went to an acting school it wasn't until I took one elective that was like an improv elective and it was the first time I did improv and I was like, you know, I was kind of good at it. And it was the first time that I, especially in theater school, that I felt like, oh my God, I I have like something unique to bring here as opposed to just doing the Chekhov plays, um, which I also really loved and I think was also good at, but it didn't, I didn't really stand out there. I was like, okay, you can do a Chekhov play. Uh, Mm -hmm. But it wasn't until I like took this one improv elective that I started thinking about comedy and then very quickly turned into like just pursuing comedy. But I I hadn't really actually ever thought about it. Um, I don't know why I was so dramatic. I'm just dramatic. So I was always Mm. doing drawn to the dramatic stuff. But now it definitely feels like. uh, Yeah, what I try to pay the bills with, I guess. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah, as you were talking, it made me realize that I think I misrepresented myself in my first, like, attempt at talking about this a minute ago. Mm, okay. Because I feel like, yes, I am. The thing that I've, like, tried to pursue in my adult life has been this, like, comedic performance side of myself. But actually, the thing that... it that's the identity that I wanted like my whole life growing up and to this day that's the identity that I am like trying to make people see me as and and it is not untrue of myself but like it is a part of me but it's not the whole of me and it's not actually what I grew up being told I was always the emotional one like in my family, I was the emotional one. I was like, I quick to cry, <clears throat> takes everything to heart, you know, is upset and hurt if you tease her. Like my dad would try to tease us to like toughen, toughen us up. No. And I just like couldn't fucking handle it ever. And my sister actually and I were talking about this the other day because she was like, I feel like dad at some point decided to like, just direct all his teasing energy towards me because he saw that you really couldn't handle it. So he was like, okay, if one of my daughters is going to be like the emotional crybaby, then let me just make the other one really intense and strong. Wow. Not that I'm not. And you guys are like, but you have different, you have those, like the exterior is different. Yeah. Totally. She has a much more like cynical exterior, like a little bit of an intensity and edge to her that I mean I have some level of intensity to me but it's it's like a emotional intensity it's not an edgy intensity yeah it's like um, you're like the intense Teletubby you're like oh she's yeah. like the most like ambitious the Teletubby, most Teletubby. It's, yeah it's still like it's relative to the Teletubbies though right <laughs> so accurate yeah and so I feel like I um I was always that and I still am that and but the identity I'm trying to attach to is like the part of myself that I see as better than that and more embraced and more celebrated and more accepted than that it's like okay if I'm going to be emotional at least let me be funny and I feel like maybe there's something mm. to your if I'm going to be the monkey 
at least let me be a performer or something or if or a fun or you know dramatic or funny like at least turn it into value maybe yeah, I, I don't want to so. speak for you though I guess I don't know um yeah I kind of stumbled into it uh yeah. especially with YouTube just stumbled into it for sure but the other thing yeah I definitely was also like def- very very emotional very sensitive like that was the thing my older sister would always say to piss me off she'd be like you're so sensitive you're so sensitive Mm -hmm. um and I do think that's a pretty fun thing to be able to the things that were like maybe you thought of as flaws or weaknesses like to be able to find where they're great and where they're useful whether it's in your work or in a dynamic how it can be your superpower that's like a a special thing. I was thinking a lot about identities as well this week. Um, I got into this conversation. This is a little different. This, 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 go for it. This, this is going to encapsulate the difference between you and me. (laughs) I was, um, I was talking to my cousins. I'm at this like family beach week right now. And we were sitting around talking about everybody's sickness. Like what's Mm. like this, what's like the illness that everybody lives out, uh, as opposed to their talent. It's kind of a talent. It's a different kind of talent. Oh, yeah. um, and then usually we were... it's two sides of the same coin. Totally, I find. totally, yeah. totally. There's a lot of contradiction there. Somebody was talking about my uncle and they were, he was trying to make dinner plans. And there was this whole fight about people wanted him to change the dinner reservation, but he wouldn't change it. And, and my aunt just goes, well, he is stubborn slash inflexible. And I was like, God, we should put that on his dating profile. <laughs> and then it just, and then I was just like, why? Well, I want to, I want to make like an on the honest dating profile for everybody I know of their, like, if you, if you had an honest dating profile, like stubborn slash inflexible, but good body, like what, what <laughs> would it say? Like what, what is the trade off on everybody's profile? And I was thinking about what I would say for yours. Oh my God. Do you want to hear mine? Yeah, I want to hear it desperately. I have so many ideas. (laughs) I know. I feel like I want you to give yours for me. Okay. Um, and you reflect on yours for yourself. It's hard to do. I haven't perfected it, but we can take a sec if you're down. Um, yeah, I need to write, I need to like write something for a second. I think I have a good one for you. Let me hear yours for me, and maybe it'll just like come as we talk about it. Okay. I think it would be like, I'm nervous. Okay. I think it'd be like hair slash eyebrows plus constantly torn between being a mommy and being a puppy (laughs) (laughs) is how I would describe like your inner tension and turmoil. (laughs) Wait, say more about that. Cause I like kind of get it, but tell me, tell me more. I feel like you're like very much this parental mother, like type A mommy figure, but you're also like a small dog. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's like to a T. And those the- needs, I think your needs. Yeah. I think some of the needs that you've explained on the podcast in your relationship or like you having trouble asking for certain needs because the, the things you're craving seemingly contradict your like w- the other side of your personality that you're sharing, which is like yes. your, the puppy needs that are contradicted by the mommy behavior. Yes. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I totally get it. You're spot on. I mean, that's like literally this week, the conversation that my boyfriend and I were having around like, how much I crave being taken care of, but I also take care of everyone else and make it impossible to take care of me. That's so fun. like, I, th- I think that's a fun challenge for a boyfriend. Impossible it's super fun for him. I He's dare having you, a but great it's time. So fun for him. <laughs> He's having the time of his life trying to navigate this fucking maze of like, oh, that's too far. Oh, I was supposed to take out the ice cubes. Like the main yeah. way that he, <laughs> not the main way. But one of the like very tactical um, things that he does for me all the time that like makes weirdly makes a huge difference for me is that he, (laughs) when he's over at my apartment, goes into my freezer and undoes the ice cube things for me and puts them in a bucket in the freezer. Oh, that's so sweet. Because I literally hate 
popping them out of the tin or whatever, but I love ice and I need all of my beverages to have the most ice possible. In <laughs> that you hate popping another, them out like, does, it, does it mess up me. your nails or you just don't like the labor of it? I just don't like to have my hands be that cold for that sustain cold and pushing like i have to both <laughs> be freezing and use my opposable pushing. thumbs to push like what are we saying this is an annoying fucking feat did um, you ever did you ever ask him to do it or did he just observe how upset you were every time you pushed ice he out? noticed i think like i would be doing it and he'd be there watching and he was just like i can't fucking watch you do this like it's <laughs> he's, so yeah, sad he's doing it he's doing it for himself he's like i can't witness this one more time yeah but now that it's a is... thing that he regularly does for me and that's only a small that's example love. of First like of all... why i need to be taken care of but at the same time yeah. if i was at my friend's house and they needed their ice thing emptied, I'd be the one to go volunteer and do it for them, even if I yeah. hate doing it. And that's like because a perfect then, summation of me. <laughs> because then you get the reward of doing something nice for your friend. But when it's just for you, you're like, I just don't enjoy the physical experience of this. Exactly. Exactly. Um, that's one okay. of the cuter things you've said on here. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw on Instagram, I got fed this ad for something on Amazon that like is an ice cube tray that sits over a plastic container and you just like click a button and it juts mm. out all the cubes into this container and it just solves okay. the problem that I'm describing and oh I God. sent it to him and I was like should I get this insecure? don't get any ideas I still need you for other things and he was like okay. I don't believe you but like yeah get this <laughs> I don't believe that you need me for other things. Yeah, yeah. He was uh, like still trying to figure out what those things are. Um, that's amazing. I need him for a lot of things, but yeah, I do make it hard. I okay. It's hard. It's hard so to give up that good because it was pre-thought. Oh my gosh, I. It's like the crux of the challenges that I have being in a long-term relationship. Yeah. It's like I, I literally have. I literally have. A note to myself on my to-do list it says give an emotional opportunity which is a note for me in my relationship because I don't even I've just learned like I I rarely even call my friends when I'm really upset about something mm. I've just learned to do things on my own and, but you like, can't be, you can't feel known and cared for emotionally if you like, don't give someone the opportunity to do it. So I had like a, a really stern talk with myself and was like, listen, next, next time you're sad, you gotta say it. And, um, I don't actually like, I don't know. I don't feel like I need somebody else to do it, but it's really nice, you know. I think I lobbed out some moments of sadness to Justin and he took care of me really well. And that felt fucking great. Felt yeah. fucking great. But it was like literally a note to myself to like watch out for the next time you're depressed. You have, yeah, you have people for that. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is a really, that is like one of the hardest things. It goes to what we were talking about last week and it kind of ties in two different things we were talking about last week one of them is like you were saying showing him the weird parts of yourself has been a challenge Ugh. yeah and also we talked about how like making somebody think that it was their idea to do something is also like a really like indirect communication is a really powerful tool sometimes in relationships I feel like both of those have to do with this because it's like yeah I Oh, I think we both probably have a tendency to just like jump to the fixing, like, I, okay, I'll process this and I'll fix it for myself. And even if I can't fix it, like, I don't really need anyone else to do it. And I'm I'm just like, I'm used to this and I'm going to jump right through all the steps, whether it's emotional labor or physical labor of doing the ice cube trays and taking the second to be like, wait, there's someone that can help me with this or there's people like even just friends that can help me with this or family or whoever you lean on yeah. and actually going to them and like not doing all the work before you've gotten there um 
I know. there's like a special kind of connection that lies there. But I, I, I do speak to my partner and speak to my friends a lot about the things that are bothering me, but I'm always like, I won't do it until I'm like close to solving it and I just need like the extra push or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then it takes away the fun for them in a way. Meanwhile, uh-huh. I'm trying to solve everybody's problems all the time, but I won't allow them to get close, you know? Yeah, I think that's the thing. That's what I that's what I'm craving is the closeness. I'm like, oh, I wish I had like this emotional connection here, but I'm not giving the emotional opportunity, which Mm -hmm. like, I'm sure, I'm sure everyone who knows me would contradict that because I'm so emotional, but like, there's a different depth. There's a hidden chamber of emotion. There's a fucking trap door in the floor of emotion that I haven't opened up and um, there's business to do down there. You know, Mm -hmm. okay. Give me, give me my honest dating profile. Okay. Well, just based on that one. (laughs) I feel like there's something with like (laughs) spreads her cheeks to really get that butthole laser on point, (laughs) but won't spread her soul to the same depth. (laughs) Spread my soul? What are you saying? You You know, like allow someone. You think I don't spread the butt cheeks of my soul? not to that bottom chamber that you were just describing to us honestly i've stopped spreading them in the laser place too i've just accepted (laughs) that it's just gonna be the fucking gaza strip in my butt crack and i don't know i don't know beauty she obviously she doesn't know what to do with it i something about her she seems so stumped by my butt crack that i really i'm i'm just like she's not it's not she's not spreading it for me who is she spreading it for right like I mean, it's not, it's like a pretty average butt crack. Like, it just, yeah, get in there. What are you what are you even doing? Put your back May- into it. I don't, even, I don't know. I don't know what she's thinking. What is she thinking? Yeah, you. Maybe that's an opportunity for. Um, how did you frame it? Emotional, emotional, opportunity. emotional vulnerability with my um, emotional. Vo- maybe you really need to open up with her. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna have to. That's my best attempt right now on the spot, but I'm gonna be thinking about this prompt and I'll come back. Okay, so you next think I don't? Okay, so you think I don't open up? What? Well, I think you open up to a degree. This is what you've okay. described in relationships is like you open up to a degree, mm. but there's still like a guard up that it's not even that you don't want to open it up, it's more just like you're not in the habit of it or something yeah and so like you have to constantly remind yourself to do it and or the person has to be really adamant about like getting through either way you know like I feel like what I know about you and Justin getting together is like him being very consistent and adamant and like making the plans and saying how he feels and you were doing those things but always with a bit I'll of always a guard thinking, up yeah I always think everyone's lying to me everything I, I feel like yes. I always my assumption is that everything is a massive deception a I was ruse. at the zoo we went to the zoo the other day and there was this plaque up about the bison the the water buffalo and the bison exhibit which they're technically different but they were grouped together and it was like our female bison is named Lucy and our male bison is named Christopher and Lucy is really shy but Christopher loves to play with the zookeeper and then the next sentence was like if you observe their personalities to be different than this it's probably because bison's personality changed throughout their life and as soon as I read that I was like these fucking personalities are made up these they don't even know who these bison are like they've just like conjured up like characters for these bison (laughs) to help with their zoo marketing like and then they're gonna slip they're gonna like you know put in something to make it personalized we feel attached to the bison and then the next sense is like okay but if you notice them being different that's you know that's cool too that isn't that doesn't you haven't caught us in a lie it's just sometimes they change just like immediately distrustful of the zoo plaque like i just feel like everyone's <laughs> everything's a big manipulation why to get me to go to the zoo more usually or something especially when it comes to identity maybe or like like you don't really know these bison like you're yeah you're, your focus of what the manipulation is around often has to do with like you couldn't possibly really know what's going on deep down with 
this bison or with me, Caroline, you know? Why? Well, I'm always just thinking, what are you trying to get me to do? What are you trying mm. to get me to do with this bison story? What are you trying to get me to do? What's your Donate. angle? Donate. <laughs> yeah. To the bison. If you, if you notice, if you notice their personalities to be different, that's because they are different bison. That's why. I didn't, yeah. Very distrustful at the zoo. <laughs> Only at the zoo. Only, Only mostly at the, at the zoo. zoo. What was that? Um, that what's it called? Documentary you told us about a couple weeks ago. The zoo documentary is. Was it literally it's called, called Zoo? zoo. It's called I can't zoo. stop thinking about it every so, time anyone mentions the zoo, which has been yeah. weirdly often in my life the past couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, I don't know how I ended up watching that, but it was pretty depressing. I didn't like it. I didn't like it, and people keep sending me memes of like cats kissing each other and stuff and i can decidedly say i don't like them it's very upsetting to me it's very upsetting you, you want them all to yourself stop it stop <laughs> this is not a silly joke i have a thing i don't with like it my best friend kai where okay so <laughs> i'm gonna try to explain this i have a thing okay. where basically i gaslight her into thinking that she has a foot fetish okay. because anytime that feet shoes socks anything like that comes up in conversation I'm like look at you talking about feet again you're just so obsessed with feet (laughs) and it's this running joke we have with our other friend Corey and I feel like that's just what I'm gonna start doing with you and the cats oh always talking about cats she's so (laughs) fucking obsessed with the cats they can't kiss each other because they can only kiss her (laughs) I got some feedback after that episode where people were like, you talked about a lot of different animals in that episode sexually. You did. And I was like, oh, I didn't even think about that. To me, it was not incriminating at all because I was just like, okay, I had one sex dream about a cat. I had a different cat cartoon crush and unrelated to those things, mm-hmm. yes, I know a lot about different animal penises, but that is not <laughs> a fantasy. It's not a fantasy. It's not a crush. Information. It's science. Sorry, I'm a scientist. Sorry, I know right. about science. Yeah. It Sorry, is know- something Sorry I'm a biologist. Yeah. 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 So I, in my head, I said it like an innocent scientist, a researcher. That's how I was taking it. I mean, Thank I knew you. a lot. I know about that dolphin. I used to talk about that all the time. That dolphin. Really? Man that had sex with the dolphin. Yeah. I had this trainer when I lived in DC. I think she was the one that alerted me to this news about the man that had sex with the dolphin. Like Oof. one day I walked into a session and it was the end of the day. I think I was her last person on her schedule and we were kind of friends and she was like, I've literally been waiting all day to tell someone about this. It's been on my mind. You're the only client yeah. of mine that I feel You're like comfortable I'm eight. like saying How old this to. How old were you? I was like 28. What do you mean? Oh, oh, wait, what was the class for? It was a personal trainer that I had in DC. Oh, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it was completely appropriate. And she was like, she was just like, I don't think my other clients would talk to me about this, but it's been on my mind all day. She could read something about your energy that she was like, Yeah, oh, exactly. And then she was like, I just watched this whole thing about this man who has sex with this dolphin. And I latched onto that information. I tell everyone about it. As soon as there's an opportunity to bring it up, I'm bringing it up. So I felt really yeah. seen here that you had equal knowledge to share as a scientist. Yeah. Well, thank you. As speaking a scientist, of, what? Speaking of science, 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 okay. <laughs> I have to make a quick mention And then we can go on to something else. But a friend of mine who listens to the podcast, his name's Andrew. He's my friend Angela's husband. It really touches me that he listens to the podcast every week because I don't think he's our typical demographic. And he'll, whenever I see him, he's like, Jess, love the podcast. Keep it up. When are you guys going to start talking about the UFOs? Oh, yeah. And I'm always like, LOL, Andrew, you kook, like nothing nothing to see here on ufos until this week apparently the government has been hiding evidence of ufos from the public for like decades so i haven't done much research at all my cousins were talking about it this week and i don't feel strongly in any direction because a 
if the universe is infinite and it's been around for forever, it seems highly unlikely that there's not life somewhere. How am I supposed to fucking know? They could be hiding. They could be hiding anywhere. I haven't, I haven't looked in most of the hiding places. <laughs> I haven't checked you know, behind every bush, right? I haven't checked. It could be any of these holes. Um, so I don't really know. I also don't really care. I just feel like maybe I don't care, but um, also maybe not. Um, but then my one cousin was like, was a little, cons- little extra conspiracy theory. He was like, usually if something this with this energy is in a congressional hearing it's because they want to distract from something else that's going on uh, he's like he's like some politician wow. like had sex with a child like that's why this is happening but um which i feel like was out also a pretty good point because Amazing really my because my my main question was how does something like this get brought to a congressional hearing it was a trial right like who is pushing that to a trial, like I don't, I don't really understand how the process works. I'm yeah. sure it's, I'm certain it's easily Googleable. I won't be doing it. I just want someone to tell me how it ends up there. Like, what are, is someone? Is there a question to be defended or proven, or they're just like, we feel like talking about it. We want to give like a class <laughs> presentation, or like, so, how does it end up there? So apparently there was a whistleblower, but just sure. because there was a whistleblower doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to have a congressional hearing about it. So I do think the fact that they took up this whistleblower on his call out his or her call out yeah. is suspicious because the other thing is like the premise that we're now operating under is like oh my god the government has had evidence of this and they haven't told us since when is the government telling us everything about every piece of evidence that they've ever collected on anything like why are we shocked that yeah. there's stuff that they know that we don't know i feel right. like that's Can we cover always this in the 60s? how it goes I just right, Googled... so it is a bit. I think your cousin's <laughs> onto something. What'd you Google? I think he is. Um, I just Googled UFO congressional hearing. Why? And I it did, actually didn't bring up really anything very helpful. I don't want. I actually don't want to know the key takeaways from it. I just want to know mm-hmm. why it's happening. Why? Yeah, I don't. I don't think I care either because it's similar to to our take on history, which is like, tell me <laughs> what's in it for me. What's Tell me how my me? life is changing. <laughs> What's in it for me? Oh my god! It's Am I an alien? Or is there I actually... figure? Yeah, this is kind of how I feel about most news. Like, if it's important enough, someone will let me know. I'll hear. Agree. Oh, totally. Yeah, so someone's gonna let me know. Like, I I heard that this was happening. That's kind of all I need to know. Right. So right. many people are mad at me for saying that. So many people are upset. So many people. It's how just I feel. <laughs> It's how I feel. And you didn't come here for news. Okay. We gave you a little bite of the UFO news because it's specifically for my friend and we're and, probably done talking about it now. And by, and as far as we meet, when we say we gave you some of the news, we said, we <laughs> confirmed that we heard something was happening in mm-hmm. the world. And we asked a bunch of questions that people have answers to. And we don't. Lizzo did post about it. And so oh. that's also how I knew about it was mostly yeah. from Lizzo. Okay. So, you know, do it that way. Well, I Next did think topic. it was annoying. I did think it was annoying. The only thing I read um, from some of the congressional uh, trial updates was that what do they, they don't call it a UFO. They call it a UAB or something. Oh, what's that? They call it uh, you. I think it's on American bros on yeah. <laughs> how dare yeah, they UAB, unidentified anomalous phenomena i just wouldn't be like why are you trying to be so special you know we had an acronym you know we had an acronym and i don't know if the attitude is to be like well we need to be like more clinical more professional than just ufo they said ufo in like you know men in black like we can't say ufo it's like right. we know what you're saying <laughs> you know you're just saying ufo you're not cool do you think you're cool you're not cool Yeah, I wonder if it's because UFO is so closely linked with alien life, even though what it stands for is un or what is it? It's like something flying objects, unidentified flying objects. Maybe flying is too presumptuous. Like maybe it's not flying. Maybe it's a floating levitating illusion. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's levitating. I'm just saying optical (laughs) illusion, and you're like, no, the spaceship could be. um, But we don't know what the technology it is. They could easily yes. have technology that we haven't discovered yet. Uh, They're not, it's not just like a plane flying. Please yeah. have an imagination. 
um first of all the tattoo i have on my hand of these little rain clouds with a sunbeam shining down they really much more than they look like rain clouds with a sunbeam they look like flying saucers with like a laser beam <laughs> they do down. look like that i've so noticed pe- it before people always think i just have ufos tattooed in my hand which i'm not opposed to in any way i'm into it makes total yeah, you, sense you're a scientist maybe. and you're just keeping on top of the situation <laughs> every time i see an un an unidentified anomalous phenomenon i get it tattooed on my hand so i can look at it later that's the mo- that's the most efficient system i've come up with it's a tally quickly quickly i need to find a stick and poke artist to tattoo this on my hand so i can never forget it yeah. i love that for you thanks for okay. doing that for the rest of us you're welcome okay man it's so good it's so good to be able to update people on the news <laughs> doesn't it feel rewarding it's like oh yeah. thank god we got that out there yeah yeah okay what other news do we what's need on your mind know? i, feel like I was gonna share <laughs> i got in um i'm on this family vacation and i one of my goals at least set my goals my intentions things just like oh make sure to have quality time with this person make sure to like be nicer to this person make sure to shut your mouth about this thing and one of my things is definitely like don't get in a fight with my mom don't get in a fight with my sisters so first thing I did was I got in a fight with my mom and, um, it was, it was a tiff. It was a bit of a public tiff. It was witnessed mm-hmm. by many and it wasn't good. And, um, throughout, it wasn't the worst, but it wasn't great. I'd say it was like a me, I think it was like a B plus fight. Okay. And, um, throughout the next like 24 hours, all of my aunts and uncles and cousins were being like, did you reconcile with your mom? Did you make up with your mom? Are you guys on good terms again? Cause my mom like left very visibly she like left and was pouting from like dinner that evening so mm-hmm. everybody knew and and so I was like oh yeah we made up we made up within like 24 hours and this was the reconciliation ritual which I feel like with I'm actually very good at apologizing I would say I'm pretty good at apologizing it I, I hate it it still feels uncomfortable but I'll do it and I'm um, uh having tough conversations whatever I'm good at all that but there are certain personalities I feel like in each of our lives where like you can't do you can't do the normal ritual like it's like a very specific ritual I feel like moms and dads are probably number one where you're like they're missing this emotion or they're missing this (laughs) part of their brain so like the normal system doesn't work Mm -hmm. so I was going to share I was going to share do you want to hear the system of the um reconciliation ritual with my mom yeah I really need it because I have a similar <laughs> struggle. Okay. Love my mom. Can't figure her out for the life of me. <laughs> I'll say this process was pretty seamless. Um, so step one, she's got a pout. First step one, she's pouting all night long. Okay. Step number two, we wake up in the morning. We're like in the same condo. We wake up in the morning. She's shunning me. She has to shun me. And I'm also not going to address her. You try not to make like direct eye contact, but it is important for me to be like, loosely in her vicinity I have to be around to kind of show that I'm not in fight mode I'm not in fight mode I'm not in angry mode I have to like demonstrate it's not quite an olive branch but just like an aura of calm an aura of safety but you can't look you can't look it right in the eye so like does the aura include kind of just like being nice and normal with other people around her? yes yes I wouldn't I wouldn't directly address I wouldn't directly address because that would be too much too soon yep She's still on edge. I can't, if I were to be like, good morning, she'd be like, fuck you. So I can't, okay. Can't, okay, okay. can't do that. Um, then you wait for an opportunity. And, and by opportunity, I mean like a problem that has to be solved, something mm-hmm. technical, hopefully something logistical, physical would be good. So the opportunity that came up the other morning was like a drawer was broken in the kitchen and a dish got jammed in the drawer so you couldn't open the drawer. And I was like, I'm coming. I see you opportunity. I'm coming. That's, that's all me. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I think I can get, I got like a little wrist. So I was like, I think I can get my hands in there and fix this drawer. And I've like, I've never felt so much pressure. I had to fix the drawer. I just knew that fixing the drawer that my mom wanted fixed, that nobody could fix like this. The reconciliation depends on this. Mm-hmm. I can imagine like everyone in the family hearing that the drawer was broken, knowing this is Caroline's duty as per the fight yesterday. And then like watching and sweating and like 
counting down like the yeah. pressures on everyone's like she has to do this or else the vacation's ruined <laughs> totally totally including my mom she's like okay let's see what you can do right <laughs> She's like very much surveilling me, like standing above me. I'm down on my knees, like trying to fix this drawer. She's like, hmm, hmm. Just hmm. like so noting you, the so different you things you're going to fix this. Oh. So you think you're going to fix this. Interesting. Um, I did fix the drawer. Big breakthrough. But it leaps Huge. and bounds. Okay, but then you have to act chill. You have to take the distance again. Step away. Take the distance. Act chill. Act like it wasn't. Act like it wasn't an apology. It was just something we did together. Just it's just chill. We're just chill. <laughs> just <be> yeah. chill. <laughs> just two a people lot of it, being chill <laughs> a lot of it is I'm realizing is like kind of playing hard to get with your mom <laughs> then a few, a few hours later we've taken distance we for, pretended like we didn't know that the other one was there taking distance a few hours later I receive a text from her but it's not a direct text it's a text on a text chain that we've never mm. had before that's just like <laughs> her, her texting me and all the sisters and she's put a name on it she's labeled it girls I've never seen this text chain before <laughs> and it's saying like I'm down on the beach I'm down on the beach by or no I think it said like the cousins are down on the beach by the volleyball net not saying that she's there I'm surmising that she's there and she's not inviting us and she's actually not specifically <laughs> talking to me but I know I know it's an opportunity she's lobbing something up it's relatable <laughs> so I'm like I'm like Julie I gotta go down to the beach I assume mom is there it's not totally clear but I think she wants me to go but Julie has to come with me I can't go alone it's too vulnerable yeah I'm like Julia, get the fuck dress. We have to go down. Like the ritual is phase Dan. two. Do what you <laughs> fucking need to do. Yeah. <laughs> you have to come with me. And um, so we get down there. Yeah, not an invitation, not a direct text, but it's still an invitation. Get down there. There she is. She's definitely avoiding eye contact. Not a smile to be seen. We we get a planet ice together, which is this kind of like slushy ice ice cream thing you can get. That's important. Um, because she pays for it. I accept it. Do I want mm. a planet ice? No, but I have no choice but to accept it. That's a very important stage. Just the two of you or Julia comes for that? Other people Julia's there. Julia's drifting. Julia's drifting in our wake, kind of in the wake of our, stink, sure. <laughs> our stinky vibe. <laughs> no, and no, there's not really conversation happening. It's just like, like ambient, like everyone's like ambiently, like commenting <laughs> observations on things. Yeah. Like no one's really talking like to Like reading other. the signs as you walk yeah, by yeah. things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> eating our planet ice that I'm like not in the mood for but have to eat if I don't fucking fix this drawer and swallow all of this planet ice there's no reconciliation <laughs> we walk a little more we walk a little farther in moody silence together and eventually you know like, we have to find like common things to complain about we we find the rest of the family in their spot um act chill disperse disperse for a bit act chill and then at some point I can't remember who suggested we go in the water I think I do like an open invitation to like maybe we'll go in the water oh mom elizabeth aunt mary like oh mom i don't know did i say mom i didn't even mean to say that uh, yeah you want to go and then we all <laughs> go in the water i compliment her a little bit and that loosens her up we're pretty close to the end now and then we find somebody to talk shit about together a third yeah. party somebody's not there somebody you know distant relation distant friend someone that we can both safely talk shit about and then we're back. That's how, that's exactly how it happened. Wow. Bravo. Well Thank done. You. Congratulations. <laughs> Mazel tov. That's Thank amazing. You. It was a perfect system. It was a perfect system. I was on that ride with you. Like my heart was beating <laughs> at certain moments in that story so fast in my throat. I could not relate more because my family operates in very similar ways. I feel like it's yeah. similar to how it's my sister and I thing. do it. It's a family thing. It's yeah. like we're all crazy with our family. I'm my worst self. I'm like my most indirect self. I don't know. Totally. It's so crazy. But there also is something about the the element of it that was like in front of people, like you're on vacation with your family and not just your immediate family, but extended family too. So everyone's kind of aware of this tension yeah. and like oh, yeah. waiting for it to break. And they don't exactly know the ritual, but you yeah. know the ritual and you like, know that it's going to take a bit of time. Yeah. <laughs> My and uncle so, like, was like prodding me the evening before. He was like, go apologize, go apologize. I was like, no, it's not That's the time. not it how it fucking works. It can't works. be now. It can't be now. Yeah. You have no fucking idea. Wow. And so now do you feel free? Like, is everything good? Are there more people to talk shit about? What's next? I, yeah, I feel good about it, but I have to preserve this. I'm leaving in a day and- so I just need to get through the next day without blowing something up, which is honestly yeah. hard. I don't know if you feel this way, but I 
can be such a loose cannon. I just always have this feeling like, I don't even know what I'm going to say sometimes. I don't even know Mm -hmm. what I'm going to do. I don't even know when I show up places, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's not, there's not a lot of thought. There's not a lot of control. Unfortunately. I think that is definitely how I feel most of the time in my life. And in a good way, almost in a way where it's like, I'm showing up and I'm going to be myself. And if that includes, you know, exploding and saying something crazy, so be it. And I feel generally like comfortable to do that in most settings, except with my family. When I'm going to be with my family, I try to turn off that part of myself, which is pretty much my whole self. <laughs> That's good. And so, That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you. Thank I just you. try, you know, I love it. I just try not to be myself heartily. Yeah. I really just like dim a lot of, I don't want to say the wrong thing. And so I end up saying very little. So I'm not like worried when I go into family situations that I'm going to blow up because I've gotten very used to like, okay, this is the time when I am quiet and I'm wrong. I assume that I'm wrong about everything. I assume that we're going to do it everyone else's way. Like I just totally Mm. become submissive, which I don't love. And I have been working on because they also know that that's not me (sighs) and they notice it. And like, I'm not showing up as myself and whatever. We all don't want it to be that way. It's so much easier said than done. And so, yeah, my solution is just like, I show up as a shell of me and I try to please everyone and keep the peace. And if I'm, if there's, it doesn't mean there's not conflict, but usually the conflict isn't something that I said. It's more like me reacting to something someone else said and my emotional self coming out and being upset or hurt or offended or whatever. Um, So anyway, I don't know. It's a little, it's like similar, but different from what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. You have your system. I yeah. I should shut up more. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. I don't know if you should though. I don't know. I don't know what the right way is because, like, I don't like that I'm just quiet. Like, it doesn't feel authentic. Yeah, I know, but there's this thing with family where sometimes, like, the truth. The things that are driving you crazy, it's like, it doesn't, sometimes it doesn't go anywhere to share it. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just hurts people and like nobody can learn from it. And there's just a fight. I think that's the thing you learn with family. It's like, you're so rooted in your dynamics and your patterns, myself included, like we all are. It's, um, I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. Yeah, that's true. It's one of those things of like, we've, been through this a bunch of times like we all know to some degree you kind of know the cycles you get into and the ways that you react and the things that everybody should work on but like for whatever reason when they show up in the family if they've been working on it or not you don't see the fruits of that labor yeah it's just gonna happen and so it's like do I approach this with my mom or do I just let it pass the way it always passes because she's always been this way and I don't know if it's changing and oh, I've changing. always been this way changing. with her yeah, yeah like maybe I'm better elsewhere maybe I've learned from this and shown up in other ways elsewhere but like here I'm always this and so it's just kind of I, I understand what you're saying of like is it even yeah. worth it to bring it up and work on it when it's with family I don't know it's more yeah. like keeping the peace feels more worth it at some point and that's I think why I've result it's resulted in how I show up totally I I do think so um I think you can do go the idealistic route like what if we could just communicate it through everything especially when you're dealing with I don't know a lot of people a lot of people in a different older generation like no it's not really reasonable to think that they're going to change no it's fucking hard enough for me to change myself like it's not realistic for me to think anyone else is going to change um I remember my therapist even being like, yeah, sometimes you just don't get to show up there. And we focus on like naming, wow, it's really disappointing that I don't get to show up here as myself. And like, that's the Mm. truth. You just like, it's really disappointing. Being here is really disappointing. Um, Which is not all the time. I think that's the thing I experience a lot with families that like, 
it's exactly what you expect, exactly what you expect, exactly what you expect. And then boom, something out of like left field. And you're like, what? Oh, that was weird. And then you're like, oh, I guess things can be different. Things can be weird. And then it's like exactly what you expect, exactly what you expect. Yeah. <laughs> and then like some weird wrench. I don't know. You want to lighten up? Yeah, let's do it. Let me see what I've written here. I feel like I should some transition for that. I'm going to give a transition out of that so that Abby has something to ride on. Anyway, uh, f- family is weird. That's the end of that <laughs> conversation. <laughs> I'm s- this is my transition. This is my transition into the next conversation. I'm You're trying to, to satisfy my segue need. Your needs for you segue. you don't have to. Yeah, I don't, don't need it. I don't, Not- I don't need it at all. You don't have to appease me. We don't have to okay. act like family here. We are brother kings, but we can be honest with each other. You don't need to segue the way that I do. It's fine. It's Thank fine. you. Thank you for letting me show up as me. <laughs> I have a observation that I had the other day. No. Okay. <laughs> okay tell me. Um, <laughs> okay. So you know how we often talk about, like you specifically have been trying to make more intentional eye contact with people as you move through the world, like cashiers and people that you interact with just strangers. who are random strangers yeah yeah so that's a great thing nothing that I'm about to say is to make a point that that's not a good thing to do however it's on it's probably not a good thing to do I haven't thought through it that much <laughs> I, I already agree with whatever you're gonna say well I just have noticed there have been multiple situations this week that I've walked by as a bystander and I've been like oh that patron of this establishment is trying to be really friendly to the person working here and it's fucking annoying the hell yeah. out of me as a bystander annoying the person that works here nobody yeah. wants it nobody needs it read the room like you're yeah. doing too much Ooh. i literally walked by a woman at the post office mailing a package and the only part of the conversation that i caught as i walked by was this woman saying to the person working there yeah in grammar school i always got in trouble for whatever I don't know how that sentence finished some some inane comment yeah some yeah, inane I was like this, about herself. this woman working at the post office just wants to get her job done there's a line behind you of people waiting mm-hmm. to ship their packages and you're talking about your fucking life as though they care at all and they have time yeah. for this at all and Read I just room. realized like there's such a fine line to that mm-hmm. friendliness being super positive and connective and like respectful. And then it very quickly becomes disrespectful if you can't yeah. read the room and becomes super like, needy, super, super needy, needy and it's super actually, self-serving again. It's always yes. self-serving. <laughs> it's actually, it actually is a pet peeve of mine. I was thinking about recently. I don't know who I was talking to about this, but like the person who needs to always get the waiter or waitress or bartender or cashier or whoever to like think that they're cute not even like in a sexually like romantic I think they're cute kind of way but just like as a person like they always need to be cute to that person it's fucking annoying it's fucking annoying it's so attention seeking it's like and I do it sometimes but I do think all I do is attention seek all (laughs) I do is attention seek please but I, I think I'm able to read the room when it's like not the time to really you know spend energy on that or spend someone else's energy on that like if it's an empty place and we have all the time in the world and we're like at on in a beach town we're in Rehoboth Delaware and nobody has anywhere to be and yeah it's an empty coffee shop and I'm fucking trying to be cute because to the barista because I like attention like fine but when it's a post office in Chicago with a line behind you. With a, on a line Tuesday behind morning. it. Oh, I could kill him. I could kill him. With yeah. a line behind it. Yeah. You're so you're so true. You're so true I'm and you're so, so tr- real. I'm so trill. Tr- you're true as hell and you're trill as can be. Thanks. You're Thank welcome. you. Yeah, I validate this complaint. It I guess it is a complaint. We've stopped using the words petty complaint because I think one we just forget to use our segments and two they're often not petty they're just real like I'm just well, complaining and that's what conversations are yeah. often made up of and yeah I hope not to complain for an entirety of an episode but sometimes no. I'm gonna bring you a complaint why would that be your goal what's wrong with you no <laughs> no, no, no so you just want to sit in silence that's bad 
that's a bad podcast that's bad decorum that's bad one time oh my god dude one time I went to therapy (laughs) and I'd reached like a plateau with my therapist for whatever reason I've seen her on and off for like maybe six or seven years and there's been various times where I stopped seeing her um you just like yeah you maybe you don't have a ton you're working on right now you need to like go out and gather some new life problems or I don't know I'm not seeing her right now my sisters have kindly informed me that I should definitely do <laughs> therapy but I'm the like, way well, that yeah, you the I way that you did for here. me recently because uh, I haven't really been seeing <laughs> mine very much either I'm like oh I have this no, podcast now I bring my honestly, complaints to Caroline <laughs> literally honestly I feel like it's why sometimes I don't have that much to say to my friends either I'm like I already processed it on the podcast I talked to my camera about it for a YouTube video I talked to just about it for the podcast like I think I figured everything out I think I'm doing it right but this was a couple years ago and I was it was in person in New York I was seeing my therapist and I went (laughs) and I didn't have much to talk about I was like yeah I don't know like she's always like where do you find yourself today? Like, do you want to do a meditation? The center, which I never want to do, run out the clock. No, I'm <laughs> fucking paying for those minutes. I literally never want to do a meditation, Nancy. And she's like, do you need to center a little bit? Do you have something top of, your, top of mind? And I was like, yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't really have anything today. And she's like, that's fine. We can sit in silence for an hour. And I was like, bitch, no, we cannot. Mm-mm. No, we fucking cannot. Not if I'm going to pay you. No, we cannot sit in silence for an hour. But thank you for the suggestion. <laughs> I think that's a we crazy thing a for her to suggest. <laughs> it was so crazy. I was like, we're fucking 200 bucks an hour. No, we cannot. Thank you. I guess some people, there's probably rich people out there who literally will pay for an hour of just sitting in silence with some. I yeah, don't know. There's people who will you, yeah, who will pay for an hour of you just like, describing your toes to them like true True. i've thought of taking advantage of that so many times i don't know Um, why my feet my feet have made like have become such a big part of my content mm. and i don't know i haven't (laughs) tried i haven't tried to make them but i there's like a lot of barefoot content of me on the internet um just subtly just like hints of it i've noticed because you one time posted Yeah, one time you posted a story about like new shoes that you bought and they were sandals. And so you took a picture of your foot in the sandal. Like in the flowers, like in a field of flowers. Yes. And it was cute. And it was kind of you to share the link to the shoes and all of that. But I was also like, you can't give this out for free, baby girl. Like draw something over the toes. Draw a little black line. I mean, I don't know. I'm not going to, it's not like you can like get all, like see all the toes, you know, raw on my Patreon. Like there's not somewhere else (laughs) you can go to to get the feet raw. So I might as well just give it out. I don't know. It feels right. I've I've always liked the barefoot. I think I started intentionally like being like barefoot in a lot of my videos because it feels like we're at home. It feels cozy. It feels intimate, not like sexually intimate, but just like, I'm not wearing shoes. I'm not wearing socks. I'm just like that toes out. Right, um, right, right, it right. felt like the right vibe a lot of the time but I don't know if people are there to like think about my toes cool I don't care yeah oh, I guess right. I've never I've never understood that like if someone's jerking off to my toes I'm well I won't even ever know about it like how do I I who cares I don't even know I about guess it. Even the I, point is like you won't ever know about it but you could be making money off of it now yeah, if you're someone who's that, never going people to do say that, that all the people who've commented that to me, they're saying it in jest. I assume you don't actually assume I'm going to make an OnlyFans for my feet because I'm not. So I think when people say, like, I don't know, I feel like most YouTubers, they actually won't show their feet, but they're also not making an OnlyFans. So it's like, it's just like an inconvenience now where I can't show my raw dog feet. That doesn't help me. Yeah. Yeah. I totally hear what you're saying. Yeah. I mean, true. It is said in jest. However, I often see these reels pop up. You know, these people who like walk around New York and stop random people on the street and they're like, oh, how much do you pay for your apartment? Can we see it? Or like, how much do you make in a month? And it's just like supposed to whatever. Financial freedom. We all can know how much we make or something or just be jealous of people. So this girl- Yeah, what's the point? What is is happening in this room? Why are we doing it? I don't know why we're doing it, but it's content. Why is it freedom? Are we free? Are we free? Okay. And this girl- just popped up on my page who they stopped on the street and they were like what do you do and how much you make and she was like I make what was it something crazy like thirty thousand dollars a month from foot pics on the internet and when I see things like that 
I'm like financial freedom. <laughs> yeah. Like I could have it. I could have it. Um, yeah. I'm not opposed to it. I think I'm just too lazy, I guess. It does seem like a lot of effort. Like, cause some people get really creative with it or they'll do like personal requests where it's like, Oh, oh. this man commissioned a picture of my feet in macaroni and cheese and oh you'll no. give me like 50k for no it. Oh yeah my God. sometimes it's craft, like that craft mac and cheese or like an annie only like annie's only only annie oh annie's, yeah. oh, so like a light a light cheese like a havarti or something yeah oh. um going back to the therapy i, I don't want to talk about it now because it's like more insightful than i want to do at an hour yeah, 20 minutes hear. in i don't i don't want to hear it but i would like to talk about in a upcoming episode i had that written down as a upcoming co- topic um like those times when you're feeling disenchanted from therapy or those times when you show up and you don't know what to say and how to like one make the most of it but then also to like just accept that it's okay to feel like that sometimes and take a break from it. I don't know. I don't want to go into it right now, but I do want to like cool. throw out there that if that's interesting to you and if that's interesting to people, um, I have thoughts. I feel like nice. I have been such a proponent of therapy that a lot of times my friends will text me and be like, what do you do when you like don't have anything to talk to your therapist about? And I first actually all, do have some good advice for it. I would be super interested in hearing that. But first I would think like your therapist is re- like, that is definitely a part of their responsibility to care, carry mm-hmm. the like, to carry the majority of that load of like knowing what to ask and knowing where to True. dig and seeming and seemingly innocuous places. Um, but yeah, I would, I actually would love to hear that advice. I, I don't know what I would immediately say to that. I'm down. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. this has been not for everyone. We're a podcast and you're here and that's on you. Um, you can, um, write us in. Yeah. Write, DM us with your best dating advice, relationship advice on Instagram, not for everyone pod with the number four on Instagram, ABI Newhouse. You can DM her for your audio needs. Jess is Jay-Z DeBakey on Instagram. I'm Caroline Winkler on YouTube and bitch. We love you. We'll talk to you next week. Mwah.